A lot of Call of Duty games on PC are actually really dangerous to play, and sometimes I browse Reddit on some of the games and I see people asking, is the game safe? Is this game safe? Can I play this one safely? And I see a lot of misinformation going around and a lot of people who actually don't know or not aware of the risks. So I thought I would make a video about every single Call of Duty game on PC, which ones are safe, which ones are really dangerous, and which ones are a bit risky but are still playable in some ways. So today I'm gonna go through every single Call of Duty game on PC and which ones you should avoid completely and why and also which ones you can play and how to do so safely. So first let's understand what the risks actually are for playing some of these games. Most of the Call of Duty games have peer-to-peer -peer connection so right away that is not a very secure networking code. It's a very old school way of doing things. It's only since Modern Warfare 2019, I believe, that the games actually have dedicated servers, which made them a lot safer. But before that, all the games are peer-to-peer, -peer, which means your IP address is very easily obtainable. Of course, an IP address is never good to show to others, but it's not the end of the world, unless you have bad actors who specifically want to target you, know where you live, stuff like that. But honestly, it's not that big of a deal, especially with VPNs uh, being a thing nowadays that are pretty popular. If you really care about people not knowing your IP address, then just use a VPN while playing any Call of Duty game, really. Because a lot of the mod menus on these games allow people to see your IP address, and in some cases allow them to DDoS you, which, if you don't know, DDoSing is or a DOS rather, is a denial of service. It basically crashes your internet, makes it so that your internet just stops working for a while. It's a pretty common thing. A lot of people have probably experienced it back in the day. Nowadays, it's not that big of a deal. You just restart your router and your IP changes and then it stops. But back in the day, the DOS attacks were a big deal and it happened a lot on Call of Duty, even on the Xbox 360. You've probably seen someone do one of these attacks on someone else at some point when you were playing back in the day. So yes, of course, it's still possible today, but with a VPN and the routers that you can just restart, it's not that big of a deal, but still, it's something I thought I would mention. Other things people can do in pretty much all of the games is crash your game. That's very common. Most of the Call of Duty games have exploits where they can crash your game. Uh, a lot of them, they can also join your private sessions or solo sessions in some cases. I'll go into specifics with each game, but for now, I'm just going into like an overview of the things people can do on most of these games, just so you're aware if you don't want to watch the whole video. A lot of people, they can reset your ranks. So if you play with randoms, they can just completely reset your rank. And uh, more recently, we've seen people getting banned altogether from the game, uh, even on console. People have been banned from the game, either from a mod menu that injected bad game files, not allowing them to launch the game, or somehow banning their account from the servers, so people have to make a new account by the game again. Uh, that's getting really common, actually. I've seen a lot of people on Reddit and Twitter talking about that happening to them, even on console. So, but just know that it's a risk if you play any of the Call of Duty games in public matches. Now, the big one, the big security risk is RCE, remote code execution. Now, for PC games, some of the games have what we call RCE or a RAT exploit. What happens here is basically there's a there's some lines of codes in the game that allow people to utilize a buffer overflow in the game, which basically means they can write code that the game reads and then the game doesn't verify if that code is normally, uh, let's say, accepted by the game as it's server side. So let me just kind of explain that as simple as I can. So basically you're playing an online match. It's peer to peer. You have someone else who decides to write code in the game and send it to you through the server. 
the game sees that this code comes from the server so it allows the code to be ran in the game files which actually leads to the code being ran on your pc so effectively people can run code on your machine through the game and that is very dangerous because that means they can do whatever they want with your pc if they want to break your PC, or delete files, or download files, or send files to your PC, they can very much do that. Most of them, so far, what we've seen, if you've seen streamer clips, whatever, most people just kind of open porn tabs and try to have a laugh out of it. Yo, my game, my game just opened up to Pornhub, I swear to God, bro. I'm what the fuck? Oh, God, it did! Yo, 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 yo. Yo. It's a very serious thing uh, in the fact that people can actually send malware to other people and they can basically rat people, which is a remote access Trojan. So basically, most people will try to be stealthy about it. And if you launch a Call of Duty game, you play a public match with someone, they send let's say some kind of very stealthy malware into your machine they can basically spy on you get all your data your information your passwords everything you do on your pc it's basically they have complete control over your machine through this game and in some cases uh if you don't have let's say antivirus software on your pc they it could even go beyond just when the game is being launched because a rat can infiltrate itself into your pc on the long run as well so effectively playing call of duty on pc opens yourself up to having actual malware on your pc or spyware and just having someone being able to ramage to your pc at any time so again the risk is pretty low for that kind of thing there's not a lot of people who utilize that exploit in that way from what i've seen online it is a possibility it's a risk but it's not something common, or at least not that I see posts about very often, to the point where people think that it's just fear-mongering, that it's fake, that it's not actually a risk, when in fact it is. And we've seen it happen, again, with streamer clips, you can see for yourself, having people control their PC and open, you know, browser tabs on their PC, well, what else can they do if they are able to do that through the game? Again, is it because people don't know that they've been infected that they don't post about it? Or is it just because people don't use it? I don't know. What I know is hackers will not go through the trouble of writing code unless there is a gain or a monetary gain for it, a reason for it, unless you're a target. So for example, if you're a streamer, of course they're gonna fuck with you because it's funny or because you're rich, but for the average player that plays Call of Duty every once in a while, there's not really any reason for these hackers to actually try to hack you. Although it is possible, I don't think a lot of them actually utilize that. But keep in mind that it, can, it is happening uh, if you piss off a hacker in your match, well, just be aware that he can control your entire, entire PC. And depending on the information you have on your PC, well, he'll be able to get knowledge on all of those things. So now that you know a little bit more about what is possible in these games, I'm going to go through all the games and let you know what's possible on which one. So let's start with the very first Call of Duty, uh, even though not a lot of people probably care about that one, I'm still gonna go over it real quick. From what I could find online, and again, I don't play this game, so I'm not sh like 100% sure everything I'm gonna say here is accurate for this game, but what I've seen is that there are RC exploits on the first Call of Duty game, and they are publicly known as CVE-2006-5058. It's used by using the command Call vote map. Apparently, that allows people to uh, send RCE. Although this game does have dedicated servers, surprisingly, uh, compared to peer to peer, which does block some of the risks. Uh, I'm not sure what the extent of the RCE is. Uh, if you're playing on version 1.5b, which, from my understanding, is the vanilla version of the game, that's the version you would get if you buy the game and play it without any modification that version of the game has the risk or any version before that as well there is a community version that's been made which is 1.6 1.6 patched the issues which means if you download the game and you download the community patch 1.6 there are servers that you can play on 1.6 
allowing you to play the game safely. So, if you're gonna play the first Call of Duty multiplayer, just make sure you get the 1.6 patch. Uh, I'm gonna link it. I'm gonna link all the patches and whatever that I talk about in this video in the description. So feel free to go there to get them. But yeah, you can actually play multiplayer safely for the first Call of Duty using this patch. Now for campaign, I'm actually not sure the extent of the RCE because it's a command call vote map. I'm guessing it's multiplayer only, but again, it's a very old game with a lot of exploits and I would not be so sure that all the exploits have been discovered or shared publicly which means uh, I would not trust this game vanilla at all. I would still download the patch, even if it's just for campaign. And honestly, I would just play offline, guys, just to be sure, which is going to be a very recurring thing for these Call of Duty games. Just playing them offline is completely safe for those of, that allow you to play offline. So again, uh, Call of Duty 1, just play it offline if you play campaign. And if you play multiplayer, make sure you use 1.6 and be aware that there, there could still be risks. Now, next we have Call of Duty United Offensive. That is pretty much the exact same thing as the first, um, the version 1.51B. And every one before that is a risk, RCE, same thing in multiplayer, exact same exploits. And you just download the patch 1.6 and play the campaign offline and you're good. The exact same thing as the first game. Call of Duty 2 also has a vulnerability and it's the same one as well, CVE 2006 5058. It's on the version 1.3, which uh, I believe is the vanilla version you get when you download. And again, uh, there is a community patch called 1.4 that you can download to play multiplayer and you should be fine. The campaign can also be played offline. So now we get into the interesting part. It's a bit of a gray area for these games that I'm gonna talk about here and I'm not a hundred percent knowledgeable about this game so I'm just gonna give the information that I found on my research and feel free to comment down below if you have more information about these games because there's a lot of misinformation but there are some games that I've looked into more than others and Call of Duty 4 is not one of them so I'm just gonna go with what I know and what I've seen there and hopefully someone in the comments that is more knowledgeable about this game can actually confirm or add to the discussion here. So, Call of Duty 4, as far as I know, does not have RCE. Uh, there are vulnerabilities in the game, like every Call of Duty game, by the way, but just no RCE exploits. In the version 1.5 and below, there is an exploit called CVE 2008-2106. It is known publicly. It allows people to crash your game and disconnect you from servers, but that's the extent of the exploit as far as I know. Thankfully, the game runs on dedicated servers, which means it's a lot safer to play than most of the other games I'll be talking about here. And there are some servers that you can play on a community patch 1.6, which patches the exploit of people being able to crash your game and disconnect you. And you should also be able to play a campaign without any problems. Now, again, I would still recommend that you play the campaign offline, just in case. Call of Duty Wall That War. Again, does not have RCE, as far as I know, or none that are known publicly. Yeah, I should say probably, because if I know anything about Treyarch games on this list, is that they pretty much all have or have had RCE exploits in the past. And even though World at War publicly does not have one, I wouldn't be surprised if it did somewhere. And people knew about it, but didn't share it. The game does work on dedicated servers, at least for multiplayer. Campaign and zombies are not, and they are on peer-to-peer -peer, as far as I know. Now I haven't played World at War in a very long time, but when I did play it, I'm pretty sure it was peer-to-peer. -peer. I would be surprised if it's not. But since there's no vulnerabilities that are really that bad that have been discovered, I would say it's pretty much safe to play Walnut War vanilla. But again, like I said, uh, I'm gonna be talking about those games later, but other games like Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3 have all had RC exploits or still have them to this day. They use the exact same game engine as this one just modified. And so if the first game to be on this engine is World at War and all the next games after this one had RC exploits, 
again, I would not be surprised if there were some in this game. I couldn't find any information about it. I've had, I know people in my life who play this game on PC and have never had any issues. But again, I know people who also play the risky games and never had anything happen to them. So it doesn't mean much to me. You do have the option to play uh, zombies on plutonium. Now plutonium, I'm going to be talking about plutonium a lot in this video and some other clients. So basically it's a client that you can download. It's a community made client for the game that allows you to play on modded servers. And those clients make sure that they patch every exploit in the games. So you can play World at War Zombies on Plutonium, which I would definitely recommend if you're gonna play zombies because I don't fully trust the vanilla version of the game, even though there's nothing very risky that has been found. And for campaign, well, I would play offline as well. I don't believe that Plutonium allows you to play campaign in co-op. So, I mean, play it at your own risk, but again, there's nothing very risky that has been found, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Especially if you play with trusted people and you don't play online publicly. So from here on out, we're getting into the really risky territory. Starting with Modern Warfare 2 2009, on PC, that is probably the most dangerous Call of Duty to launch on your machine. There's multiple reasons for this. The game has multiple RCEs that are public. Some of them have been patched, some of them have not. Honestly, I can't keep up. There's so many exploits in this game and so many things that happened that I don't even know what's true or not at this point. So I'm just gonna say it's not safe, guys. That's the, that's the bottom line of it. It has a lot of vulnerabilities. The official servers at some point had been, been taken possession by a group of hackers. Somehow they got into the servers to, and they were able to distribute a worm into people who played on the servers. If you don't know what a worm is, it's a malware that spreads through uh, different machines. And since the game is peer to peer, well, just imagine the damage that does. So if you have one guy in your game that has a worm on his PC, then this PC connects to all 11 other players in the match then the worm spreads to all 11 other players. And then when these other players join another match, then they spread their worm to the other players in the other match and it just keeps going. And the fact that this has been a thing or have been a thing, I think it's actually been patched at this point because people were talking about it a lot. And there were actually articles written about this. Uh, I believe it's actually been patched, but just the fact that that was possible on this game should tell you enough that you should not play it in any way, shape, or form. Apparently, it was caused by a file known by dsound.dll, which was actually a malware file, the worm. It looked like a game file because, it, you know, that's the kind of file that you would see in your game files. Be like, yeah, it sounds and this seems legit. But then there's a patch in August 2023 that has been deployed to not allow this file specifically to be installed in the game files. But then the funny thing is, or the sad thing really, is attackers, they just very quickly renamed the file to dsound.dll and it worked it was actually uh, allowing them to install it again so thankfully the patch also integrated an executable in the game files that is called codcleaner.exe and apparently what this does is it deletes all the files that have been downloaded in your game files while you were playing it so for example if you were playing the game and then someone uh, played with you who had the worm and then they sent the worm to you, then the worm would be deleted when you close the game. I'm not sure how effective that is. I remember hearing about it when it first uh, was patched in, but apparently it worked uh, and it actually made it so that people couldn't like install malware in your game files. But the thing is about that is like, okay, that's good. People, when they've closed the game, the game files actually clean themselves and the malware doesn't stay in the game files. But the thing about malware, guys, is that it spreads really fast on your PC, which means if someone sends a malware in your game and then you play the game for another six hours without closing it and removing it, 
uh, unless you have an antivirus that finds it while you're playing. I mean, that shit's gonna spread all over your PC. Uh, I don't see how having a codcleaner.exe that removes files when you close the game is much safer than not, because honestly, if someone wants to hack you and send malware to you, uh, they're gonna do it and it's gonna take 30 seconds and it's gonna be done. So honestly, it's really a half-assed patch if you ask me, and I would still not recommend to play this game on PC at all. And it sucks because it's one of the most popular games uh, of the Call of Duty games and it's probably the most dangerous. But yeah, since this game is so popular, there's actually a lot of people who are looking actively for vulnerabilities on this game. Which is probably why it's one that has the most discovered in it and one that actually had a worm and everything that, you know, it's the one game that hackers actually target because it's the most popular one. They know most people are going to be playing this game so they target this game specifically to hack people. And you might be wondering, well, if they patched this game, why don't they patch all the other ones? I think the answer is quite simple to that. Since the game was actively distributing malware, meaning it came from the actual game servers, that's probably why legally they had to patch it or remove it from the store. They were probably forced to do so because they were literally giving malware to people who bought the game. Even though technically it was out of their control and they, it's not Activision that was sending it, it was still the Activision servers that had been infected and infecting others in the process. That's probably the only reason it was patched and that's probably why the other games are not going to be patched because technically all the exploits that are happening are from player to player and not from server to player. That's probably the reason, if I were to guess. As far as I know, uh, the clients for Modern Warfare 2 have all been cease and desist by Activision. Okay, so while editing this video, I actually found that there is a client called Altarware, which hosts IW4X, which is a Modern Warfare 2 client that you can use to play this game safely. There's also H2 multiplayer mod, which is a mod for Modern Warfare Remastered. Basically, it's a mod that puts all the Modern Warfare 2 maps in Modern Warfare Remastered. But just know that Modern Warfare 2 is very, very dangerous to play on PC, and I would strongly recommend that you do not purchase or play that game. Now we go to Call of Duty Black Ops 1. The first Black Ops games to have really bad RC exploits, and even though the multiplayer mode does have dedicated servers, the game doesn't really have any protection on those servers. They've been abandoned for a very long time. Uh, there's no patch or anything. It's not being looked over at all by anyone. So it's basically left to the hackers to take control. So by connecting yourself to the Black Ops 1 servers, you, even if you're just sitting in a main menu, you're not even playing the game or whatever, as long as you're connected online to their servers, you are at risk. And that's a misconception that I've seen a lot, that people say, well, if you're not playing in the same lobby as a hacker, then you're safe. If you play private match with your friends, you're safe. If you play solo, you're safe. That is not true, uh, at least not for this game. As long as you're connected to the servers, you are are open to the exploits being used on you. So people can actually send code to your machine without even launching the game. There are mod menus down there, software, I should say, that you can download and you can pay for. I'm not gonna tell you where or how because obviously you shouldn't, but people do and they are able, in most of these mod menus, they have a list of every player and Steam ID and IP connected to the servers. Because again, they don't care about the servers. The servers have been abandoned for a very long time. They don't look over them, they don't protect them, they don't patch them. So people take over and they figure out vulnerabilities in those servers and it allows them to see everyone who's connected online. And from there, uh, they can, in those softwares, they have, they just have to do a click. They can crash your game, disconnect you, if they want to RCE you, and they have a few options. They just click, 
They choose what they want to do. Do I want to download malware on this guy's machine? Do I want to see his images? Hmm, and what about his credit card, maybe? They can do whatever they want. If there's a more advanced hacker or someone that's not just using a pre-made software for doing those things, they can actually write their own code and someone who knows a thing or two about coding can easily do even more damage on your machine than just a software that does it for you would do. Again, these things are very far and few between. I don't see why you launching Black Ops 1 would attract a thousand hackers to try to get your credit card information. But just be aware that if you do launch this game, you are opening yourself to that risk. So I would recommend that you do not even launch Black Ops 1 on the official Steam release. Even if it's to play campaign or zombies, solo or whatever, do not launch the game. Don't connect to those servers at all. Because again, they have a whole list. They can see who's connected. They can see who has connected in the past. They have that information. Now, of course, if the game's not launched, they can't really do much with that information. Just the fact that they have your Steam ID and your IP address when you connect, they can keep that in a in a data log somewhere and just be like, okay, so this guy logged on three days in a row. He's probably gonna log on again today. I'm gonna wait for him to log on and then fuck with him. You know, that's the kind of thing we have to think about. Some of these people have no life. That's all they wait to do is to see when you're gonna get online and fuck with you. I would just not launch that game at all. Just don't give them any information about you playing this game. Now, thankfully, Black Ops 1 is on the Plutonium client as well. So you're able to play multiplayer and you're able to play zombies safely on the Plutonium servers. For the campaign, obviously, you're going to have to play through the official Steam release. But as long as you're playing offline, there are no ways for them to fuck with you. Because again, every attack needs to be sent from the server. If you're not connected to the servers, you are safe. That's why the clients work, because it's different servers that you connect to and they are safe and kept updated. So moving on to Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2 is very similar to Black Ops 1 in some ways. It has some very bad RCE. And again, just by being connected to the servers, you are at risk of being attacked. That impacts the multiplayer mode, the zombies, and also the campaign. Just do not play that game on Steam. And since Black Ops 2 is one of the most popular games, similarly to Modern Warfare 2, uh, those, this game in particular is, again, a playground for hackers. Uh, most of them try to do their attacks on this game because it's one of the most popular. It's the one most people return to and it has a lot of vulnerabilities for them to play with. This, the multiplayer servers in particular are very dangerous right now. For about a year now, the servers have been taken over by a hacker or a group of hacker. We don't really know, but they've been taken over. Uh, they have access to the physical files of the server apparently and from my understanding what that means is that this hacker has complete control over the servers you might be wondering well how does activision let that slip how does how does that happen why aren't they patching it like they did with one over two well the reason is this guy hasn't actually like spread malware or done anything bad with the servers so far all he has done is integrate his own form of anti-cheat which actually works we've seen people who have been hacking in black ops 2 get banned from the servers by this guy so in some ways some people regard him as being the white knight of black ops 2 pc in doing activision job now the thing we have to remember about that is that yes even though this guy added his own anti-cheat and it seems like he's doing the right thing uh, he has done, or at least people have alleged that he has ratted everyone. And I wouldn't be surprised because, I mean, if you have access to the whole servers and you can see everyone who joins the server and you have a log of everything that's happening on the server and how your network connects with everything. I mean, since there are RCE exploits, what stops him from basically attacking everyone connected at once through the servers there's nothing stopping him from doing something like that 
So literally, uh, <laughs> I think it might be possible that if a thousand people are playing Black Ops 2, he could just turn the switch and brick everyone's PC. It hasn't happened. Obviously, we would know if it did happen. It didn't happen, but it's something he could do or something similar in that vein. So at this point, it's like, do you trust this guy with your entire PC? I mean, in some ways, it's a bit safer than if Activision was taking care of it, but I don't personally trust a hacker. Just with my personal information and everything, I don't know the guy. You know, what are his true intentions? We don't know. I'm pretty neutral on this. I mean, at this point, uh, just don't play the game. It doesn't matter who the servers are owned by or controlled by, rather. Even if it's a hacker or if it's Activision, it's shit either way. You can get RCE'd by anyone anyways. So there's really no reason to play it. It's not safer because this guy added an anti-cheat. He hasn't patched the RCE or anything. He can't patch the game, he just has control over the servers. And so, yeah, if you've played BO2 PC and you noticed that you were not able to vote for the next map in the lobby, that's because this guy actually removed the option to vote for maps. If you vote for a map, your vote is gonna appear for half a second and then disappear. So unless you spam your vote, then it's not going to count. And to this day, that is still present. And that is not a bug or uh, anything that was introduced with an official patch. That's actually just been a thing since this guy took over. And it's still a thing today in, let's see, we're August 6, 2024. That is still a thing. It's been a thing for about a year now. So, again, if this guy truly had malicious intent, I think something would have happened by now, because it's been a year since he implemented his anti-cheat and all that. It's easy for him to be stealthy and just no one know about what he's actually doing, because, again, if you played this game and connected to servers, just be aware that this guy has access to all your information and has control over your PC. So, what has he actually done that we don't know about? Well, I don't know. but. I don't trust it, I wouldn't play Black Ops 2 on PC at all, using the official Steam release, uh, because not only can anyone send you RC attacks, uh, the servers themselves can send you RC attacks, so it's even worse. So it would be easy for him to just write a code that whenever someone launches the game, poof, just send that code to them, and there you go, kind of like the worm, wouldn't be hard for him to do. He hasn't done it yet, but could do it. For Black Ops 2, thankfully, we have Plutonium, again, saving the day, where we can play multiplayer and zombies, and uh, it actually works really well. Uh, you can play multiplayer servers, there's even servers with bots, it's very fun, you can still rank up, do all your things. Of course, it's never gonna be the vanilla experience, but it's really not worth the risk, so just use Plutonium. For um, the campaign, obviously, you're gonna have to play offline. I don't recommend that you play while being logged on online on this game because again you could be attacked so i actually just realized that i skipped over modern warfare 3. so modern warfare 3 is pretty similar to the other games i don't have as much knowledge about modern warfare 3 as i do with the black ops games but what i do know is that it has rc exploits as well I'm not sure the extent of the risks are, uh, I'm not aware if the servers are hacked or whatever, but I do know that RC is in the game and thankfully Plutonium allows you to play the multiplayer safely. I'm not sure about co-op, I don't think co-op is implemented yet, I'm not sure if there are plans for it, or it might be and I'm just stupid, but uh, I'm not sure about co-op, but I know multiplayer is available, so again. Use Plutonium, don't play vanilla. Call of Duty Ghosts. So, as far as we know, there's uh, one RCE exploit that have been talked about. I have seen people talking about RCE exploits on Ghosts, but I'm not actually sure if it's a thing. I did see a tweet from Shiversoft Dev, which is someone we'll talk about later, who has helped a lot with RCE issues in Black Ops 3. Um, and he actually mentioned that he uh, bought Ghost on PC and he tried to mod it and got banned. And so I asked him, I thought Ghost had RC exploits, so 
uh, does it have any? Because, you know, you, why would you launch the game for someone who is so knowledgeable about all that? You would think that, you know, they wouldn't just buy the game and launch it. But uh, he responded by saying, well, we don't know for sure, basically, but uh, there's absolutely no protection against it. And the networking is shit, like most of the quality games. So, yeah, there probably are. Now, are they known publicly? Are they used often? We don't know. Uh, from this website where I've seen all the CVE, apparently it does have one that is public, but that's really the extent of what I could find here. I'm not sure. And again, who the fuck even plays ghosts on PC? So I don't think there's much of a risk there to you getting hacked, but again, it's possible. It's a risk, so I would not risk it. There is a client you can use, which is called Alterware and you can play ghost uh, safely on that client so honestly if you're gonna buy ghosts for whatever reason uh, just use that client and you'll be okay now for advanced warfare uh, it also uh, kind of similar to ghosts apparently there are rce i've never seen or heard about attacks happening on that game mostly because it's not a very popular game people just don't talk about this game as often people probably don't attack on this game as often because it's not that popular but that doesn't mean that the risk isn't there and just like ghost you can use altaware to play the game now i've looked at the altaware uh website it doesn't mention like specifically like hey we patched rce or whatever but it does say that it patched every possible way for someone to utilize an exploit if there were any so basically uh, what i'm trying to say for ghost and advanced warfare is we don't know 100 percent if there are exploits but if there are, and there most likely is, then if you use Altaware, they removed every bridge that allowed, that would allow people to use exploits on you. Without specifically patching the exploits, they patched any way for any exploits of any sorts to happen. Now the thing about Advanced Warfare is that you actually have to play the game online. For campaign, uh, I I'm not sure if you can play it on Altaware, probably not. For zombies, I'm not sure either. I think you can play zombies on altaware but i'm not sure i haven't downloaded it myself i'm not 100 percent sure about that i know you can play multiplayer for sure but survival zombies all that stuff i'm not sure but you cannot play them offline either so really the only way for you to play campaign on advanced warfare is to play the vanilla version online which is not safe again to what extent are you gonna really gonna be attacked if uh you decide to just launch the game and play campaign for three hours I don't think there is anyone waiting there for you to be playing and attacking you. Honestly, it's probably not that dangerous, but keep in mind, it is a risk. If you are going to do it, then there is a couple things that you should do to protect yourself at least. Now, what I would recommend is obviously using a VPN. And for the love of God, please don't use a free VPN because it's almost as worst as launching a Call of Duty game and having your data stolen because they will steal your data anyways. But use a, a trusted paid VPN. I'm not gonna name any. You can make your own research and come to your own conclusions. But get a VPN that you trust and hopefully it's a paid one that actually has some kind of credibility and use that to at least hide your IP address and get a proxy or something. Now, what you can also use is what I use personally is Malwarebytes. Now, Malwarebytes has an anti-exploit version that is free. You can actually download it and acts as a shield. You can choose which programs you want to add to the shields and whenever it detects an RC attack it will close the app immediately before the code can go through. Again, uh, what you could also do is try to close as many ports uh, on your network as you can because truthfully, if you're going to be playing campaign, you don't actually need the network to be working. You just need to be able to connect to the servers. If you close a port that allows you to play online, as long as you can connect online, then, you know, that's probably safer, I would say, than if you allow people to somehow join you. And uh, last but not least, and for that, you're going to have to have a lot of knowledge and a very strong PC. But what you could do is play the game in a virtual machine 
Now there's a lot of virtual machines that don't really work well with video games, but there are ways to set up like gaming VMs and uh, that should allow you to play that game in a virtual machine. Mudahar, uh, some other neighbor gamers have some great videos about how to make that happen. So I would recommend that you check that out. It's a thing you can do. So if you are going to play, and that applies for any of the Call of Duty games really, but if you're gonna play uh, a campaign while being connected online, or if you're gonna be playing any of these games really, without any protection of a client or, or a patch or anything this is probably what you should do you should get a virtual machine and you should get a vpn and some proxies close your ports malware bytes all that good stuff just get it all in there and hopefully you know you it's like a condom i mean it can still break you can still pass through and fuck up your life but at least you have the fucking thing on so yeah that's what i would recommend if you're gonna be taking that risk so let's move on over to black ops 3. now thankfully we have passed all the call of the games that had the most the most risky uh, RCE, all that kind of bullshit things. Black Ops 3 actually used to have RCE exploits, but it was patched in 2023, I believe it was in March, that Treyarch officially patched Black Ops 3. And I'm not sure the reason exactly why, but if I had to guess, it's because that is, without a doubt, the most played Call of Duty game on Steam to this day. Or at least and if we don't count the newest ones. So Black Ops 3 it averages about 20,000 players every day. I guess they patched it because it was still very popular. I'm not sure. Maybe it still made them a lot of money, so they decided to patch it. Unfortunately, that is the only thing they patched. That is all they patched. I think it was four RC vulnerabilities that were existed, and they patched all four and then called it a day, which sadly means that all the other exploits still exist, so people can still crash your game, they can disconnect you, they can reset your rank, they can do whatever they want, except RCE. Yay, Treyarch patched it, but in the same vein, it's like, well, they didn't completely patch it. To be fair to Treyarch, though, uh, like Shiversoft Dev talked about in his video, talking about uh, the patch by Treyarch, and you should look up his channel, he's actually very informed about Black Ops 3 specifically, and the exploits on this game, uh, because he's actually the one who made the T7 patch. And now this patch is what is going to allow you to play Black Ops 3 safely. Even though there's no RCE exploits on Black Ops 3, you can still get annoyed and frustrated by a player disconnected you when you're on round 99 on Kino and you're about to get to 100 and some fucker decides to disconnect you, and uh, I'm not talking from personal experience or anything, but that is very frustrating, so yes, definitely use the, two, the T7 patch if you don't want that to happen to you too. Get the T7 patch, it uh, protects you from uh, these attacks, even though they're not as dangerous, they're still annoying, you don't want to have your rank reset or being banned from the game, so having the patch is definitely good for that. Now, the thing about the patch is it will not allow you to play with players that do not have the patch, meaning that you probably won't be able to queue up multiplayer in Black Ops 3. There used to be a client called the boy client, and then you could play multiplayer on this client, but the thing about the client is that it has been cease and desist by Activision, meaning that it's not being updated anymore. And even though the boy client was released after the patch, it's not like you can actually get RCE'd on the boy client. Still, uh, there are some exploits that have probably been discovered since the cease and desist a year ago, and these exploits will never be patched on the client, so play at your own risk. I mean, you can play boy, a lot of people still play on that client, it's just not being updated anymore. And so if there are exploits that get discovered, uh, they will not be patched. So just be aware of that if you play on the client. Whereas T7 patch does still get updated. So you can play that one safely. And so as long as you and your friends have it installed, then you can play together. It actually works kind of like its own network bubble. What I mean by that is 
uh, you set up a password and then people uh, join your game. So the risky thing about if you do play with someone who does not have the patch and you have the patch on, well then you open your account to the same exploits because that guy is a direct line to the attacker. He's kind of like a bridge to you and the attacker even though you have the patch installed. So make sure that you only play with people who have the patch, otherwise the patch is completely useless. And thankfully, the cool thing is, recently he updated the patch to have uh, Linux support, which means that you can now even have the patch on Steam Deck. Which is amazing, because if you had some friends that were playing on Steam Deck and they didn't want to get the patch, or they couldn't, rather I should say, and then you had to play with them, opening yourself to risks, without, you know, having the patch, even if you had it. Well, then now they can actually get the patch. Uh, which ones came out after that? Let's see. Uh, Infinite Warfare. So, Infinite Warfare. As far as we know, there's no RCE exploits, at least none that are known publicly. Now, of course, like every Call of Duty game, they can crash your game, disconnect you, whatever. I'm not sure the extent of the exploits on Infinite Warfare because it's very not a very popular game on PC. And so I don't think people have really looked into all the possibilities or vulnerabilities and those that do know about it probably don't use them that often because uh, nobody plays the game. Honestly, I don't think there's much risk playing in Infinite Warfare. Uh, there is one YouTube video made by YouTuber Bricky that claims to have had an RC attack while playing Infinite Warfare private matches but there's no really proof shown in the footage uh, there's no like actual proof of it uh, it's just one of, of the players in his match that claims to have had his mouse move by itself now i'm just gonna ask you one question and you can make up your mind on if you think this is bullshit or not if you had the control of an entire computer and you can set code to it and do whatever the fuck you wanted with it. Why in the fuck would you just move the mouse of the guy? Basically telling him, hello, I've hacked you. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to move your mouse and not do anything. But I'm just going to move my mouse, tell you, hey, I did it, and then I'll stop. That doesn't make sense to me. Uh, if someone's going to attack you, they're going to attack you hard. Or they're going to do something like open porn. So honestly, I don't really believe that story. But yes, that's how paranoid people are becoming by playing these games. That... Even the games that don't publicly have anything dangerous uh, are still being regarded as oh shit, that game could actually be really dangerous. And while that's not necessarily a bad thing, because the truthfully, it could have RC exploits. We don't know. It's not like those games are made with a very strong wall of protection. It's actually kind of more like rotten wood or shit. So there's not really any protection at all so yeah i wouldn't be surprised if it was a thing but at the same time it's like i haven't seen anyone or any proof whatsoever or anything about rc exploits on infinite warfare and i've looked around so other than this guy in his video talking about someone potentially having his mouse move slightly while he was away um there's not really much evidence other than that to go off of for this game so Honestly, I've played it myself on PC, I've never had anything happen to me. To be fair, I only play zombies. I have played with randoms, either they uh, just didn't want to hack me, or, you know, they couldn't. So, I'm just gonna say, Infinite Warfare is probably safe, but still, I would only play with friends and only solo. Of course, may take some precautions, again, malware bytes, anti-exploit, it's free, just get it. VPN, always, while playing these games. Just uh, protect yourself as much as you can if you're gonna be playing any of the Call of Duties, because honestly, you never know when a new exploit can be discovered. Even if it's not known publicly, there are probably some people who know about some exploits and uh, are keeping it to themselves. And if for some reason you become a target for those people, well, then, you know. Again, I haven't seen a single post about someone claiming to have been hacked or RCE'd on Infinite Warfare. So, I'm just gonna say that it's safe. Now, for Call of Duty World War II, pretty much the same thing as Infinite Warfare. Never have seen or heard about RCE in that game. 
There is one Reddit post that I saw of a guy claiming that they actually had an RCE attack happen to him while playing the game. Uh, it's someone who has a thousand levels who played the game a lot and that was the only time that this happened to him. He claims that allegedly uh, he heard a beeping noise and then his game crashed or rather his game froze for a few seconds and then he was able to keep playing. And from what I know is that when you have an RC attack, since it's a buffer overflow, uh, it does freeze your game for a few seconds uh, when it happens. So he does talk about all the, I guess, effects or anomalies that an RC does create. But again, maybe it's just someone trolling or trying to fearmonger. Because he doesn't have any actual proof, we can only go off his words, and that is the only post that I could find about that. I'm not saying that it's not possible, I'm not saying he's a liar or anything. I actually believe that it happened, but it was probably someone who knew about an exploit and didn't share it with anyone, and there might be a handful of people who know about those exploits and use them, but they don't talk about it, they don't share it publicly, so... Again, for all these games, we can only assume that it has exploits that have not been discovered or shared publicly. It probably has some, but the risk of you actually getting attacked, especially if such few people know about it, uh, is pretty low. I will say that before I knew about any of this years ago, I have played World War II on PC. Nothing happened to me. I've actually played multiplayer uh, with people. I haven't even seen a hacker on this game. I was able to get to like level 30 or something, just playing normally and having fun, and haven't seen a single hacker, haven't seen an RC exploit obviously or anything. Uh, nothing happened to me. But again, that was years ago before the RC exploits and everything got very public and more talked about. So I would not say that my experience is up to date. If you're going to be playing World War II today, I'm pretty sure you would see a hacker and potentially get attacked. But as far as I know, there's no RC exploit on this game, so it should be safe. Uh, I've played a lot of times zombies with my friends. Again, nothing happened. So World War II, pretty much safe. Same as Infinite Warfare. There could always be a risk, but there's nothing known and you can just play it without really any risks as far as I know. Next up, we have Black Ops 4. Now, Black Ops 4 is on Battle.net only on PC and not on Steam. And you might be wondering why that is relevant. Actually, it is quite relevant because a lot of the exploits that exist on the other games actually come from Steam in some ways. And what I mean by that is most of them use an RC uh, that is uh, codenamed or whatever, CVE 2018-20817. And what that is, is there's a line of code that's called SV underscore Steam auth client. And that code misses a verification that verifies the file size of the files that it's reading from the data called authblub when the game sends a request of authentication to Steam. So in, in other words, in simple words, right? When the game sends a request to Steam to say like, hey, am I still connected to the servers? Hey, uh, my friend just invited me. Hey, whatever. It sends an, uh, a request to the Steam. Uh, authentication. For some reason, that code doesn't have any verification on the, the, the size of the file that is being sent. So uh, that's how people do RCE. So basically, they uh, make a request through that line that, you know, is a, a line of code or uh, whatever, a malware and whatever, and they j it just sends it because it doesn't check the file size at all. So, you, I mean, someone could literally send you like a one terabyte file and uh, it wouldn't fucking matter because it doesn't verify it. So that's basically what it is. So a lot of the exploits come from that. And so by being on Battle.net, well, it doesn't have that. So Black Ops 4 is probably the safest Call of Duty game to play on PC. Of course, it's not 100% safe because we are talking about Call of Duty on PC, obviously but it is a lot safer than the ones on Steam. 
Now, is it still possible for people to fuck with you on Black Ops 4? Well, I believe so. I've been disconnected from the servers, but it's kind of hard to tell if it's just the Black Ops 4 servers being shipped or if it's an actual attack. And same with game crashing. Now, I will say that ever since its last patch, Black Ops 4 has been very stable. Uh, barely even crash anymore on that game. And uh, the servers, well, you know, you can always get disconnected because it is Call of Duty servers after all. But I will say that I play Black Ops 4 regularly. Nothing has ever happened to me. And if I get disconnected, it's most likely the server is taking a shit rather than someone attacking me. Now, I will say that I believe there's probably ways for people to still do it. Uh, because it is the same game engine, pretty much, as all the other Call of Duty Black Ops games. And those all had issues. And I'll talk more about that later when we talk about Cold War. But uh, since Cold War has actually had RC issues, I wouldn't be surprised if Black Ops 4 had some as well. I don't think they've been discovered, and if they have, I don't think they've been shared publicly. I've never seen or heard anything about Black Ops 4 having RCEs, and the fact that it's not on Steam does make it a lot safer in that way. There's one time that was kind of sketchy that I thought maybe someone disconnected me, but again, if that's the worst they can do, then it's really not that big of a deal. Now, I don't play multiplayer and I don't play Blackout, and I still wouldn't recommend that you do, simply for the fact that since all the other Call of Duty games are not safe, then why the hell would this game be, even if it's not on Steam? Some people claim that it's completely safe because it's not on Steam, and I would argue that, yeah, Steam has a lot of vulnerabilities related to Call of Duty, but Call of Duty itself has a lot of vulnerabilities as well, and Black Ops 4 probably has some of that as well. I think it's only a matter of time until Black Ops 4 hits the same fate as the other games, and actually as exploits that are discovered and shared, but for now, it seems to be pretty safe. Uh, I've, I have like 35 days played in Zombies, and nothing has ever happened to me through Black Ops 4. So honestly, it's probably very safe. Obviously, there's still a risk, but it is the safest one of the bunch, if you ask me. So now, let's move over to Modern Warfare 2019. Modern Warfare 2019, like I said, is the first Call of Duty to actually have dedicated servers. Well, if you don't count, like, the very old ones. And so, as far as I know, is pretty much safe. There's definitely no RCE or anything like that. Uh, I think people can still crash your game and disconnect you in some ways, but I know there's a lot of hackers on this game. A lot, a lot of hackers, aimbots and whatever. In a way, it's safe. Uh, you can definitely play it without risking your personal info, but should you play it? Well, probably not, because at this point, it is pretty much hacked to, the, to hell, uh, like every other Call of Duty, so... But yeah, it's pretty safe, even if it's on Steam. Now let's talk about Call of Duty Cold War. Uh, the thing about Cold War is... It actually had an RC problem for about a week or something during its life cycle until it was patched. Somehow, this game, even though at the time it was only on Battle.net, it got that RC issue. Now, that is the reason I believe the Black Ops 4 might have some, because if Cold War had some, then why not? It's the same exact game engine, just modified. And I doubt that they're gonna patch Black Ops 4. if that exists but again that was a very long time ago and nothing seems to have been discovered on black ops 4 so i wouldn't be too worried about that but cold war it has been patched and there hasn't been any other issues with rc as far as i know but just the fact that there has been an rc issue for a week on a game that was only on battle.net and that was currently in its life cycle is pretty alarming i mean what <laughs> what else could happen uh, with the newest Call of Duties? Like, not even the newer ones are safe anymore, which is kind of sad. And from Cold War, it actually had a bunch of exploits. You could get banned from the game, you could get disconnected, you can get crashed. Uh, people can definitely fuck with you in this game. Uh, as you can see here from that streamer, he had someone who kept joining his lobby and crashing him. 
and he even removed him access from playing Modern Warfare 2, the newest one, which we'll talk in a minute. Yeah, Cold War was a mess in terms of security. Now, if you're worried about Black Ops 6 because of this, well, let me just say that it's not the same game engine. And it's probably one of the reasons why they dropped all the other game engines altogether and decided to only use uh, the Infinity Ward engine for every game going forward. That's probably one of the big reasons why, because the other engines just simply are not safe. All these engines were basically spaghetti code at this point, and instead of trying to fix three different spaghettis, well, they decided to just go with one, which is understandable. Black Ops 6 is not going to be on the same engine as Cold War, so at this point, I wouldn't be too worried because all the other Call of Duty's after Cold War seem to be pretty safe. We have Vanguard, we have Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, and Black Ops 6 coming out soon. All these games, as far as I know, have not had any problems. Except, of course, game crashing, disconnecting, that kind of thing. Uh, although rank reset seems to not really be an issue because it seems to be server side now with the whole progression system and the way they have it with every game um, being the same, all connected. So that's not really an issue. But yeah, as you can see here, this streamer was actually denied access from connecting to the MOFR 2 servers. Not sure how that's possible, but apparently, according to the guy attacking him, uh, he only paid a $25 software that allowed him to do that and the exploit that he was doing was something that he could do in Black Ops 3. Yeah, I don't know. So that, that's all. It's just weird. Um, but now they were using the game engine that will not allow people to do that. So hopefully we don't have any issues with RC or anything in the future. Now, would I say that it's 100% guaranteed? Well, probably not because, you know, if Cold War had issues, then that doesn't mean that the other ones can't. But so far we've had uh, multiple games on that engine and we haven't had any type of exploit that was as bad as RC, so do keep in mind if you do play the old games that they are very dangerous and you shouldn't play them unless you're using a patch or a client or protect yourself in some way. Now, the big question on your mind might be, well, are they ever going to patch it? And the answer is probably no, to be honest, because again, uh, as I was talking about earlier, when Treyarch patched the RC exploits, well, why didn't they just patch every exploit while they're at it? And to be fair to Treyarch, um, that would have taken a very long time because Call of Duty games have hundreds of exploits, each of them different ones, different lines of codes. They all have their own spaghetti code. To give you an example, uh, Dark Souls had an RC exploit on their games and they shut down the servers for approximately, what, six months until it was fixed and put them back up. Same with GTA Online, it all actually had RC exploits for a very long time. And it was a big issue for streamers trying to play the game that they had to use uh, patches and clients and play alone. And eventually they did patch it, but it had been known and talked about by big streamers of GTA Online for a long time, for about a year and a half before the issue was actually patched on PC. Now, is it because they don't care about PC or is it whatever? I don't know. What I know is if it took six months for Dark Souls to get patched and it took a year and a half for GTA to get patched, just imagine each Call of Duty game, how long that would take. They all have their own different engines that are outdated, their own networking code that are just not up to date. They don't have any ASLR security at all. They don't have any protection. They're not being taken care of and the servers themselves are infected and sending worms to people. How do you fix that? <laughs> There's just so much to go back and fix that at this point, it would probably be less work to just fucking remaster the game entirely. Unless they hire an entire studio to just go and fix all these issues for the next five years. And I don't see it happening. Now, what could happen, and what should happen, in my opinion, is the games are removed from the stores. Because honestly, in my personal opinion, it should be illegal for them to still sell those games. Uh, I'm kind of insulted that when I open my Steam store page, and I see on the front page the Call of Duty 20th Anniversary uh, sale, 
and it just shows me uh, literal malware to download for $60. I'm a bit pissed about that, and to be honest, no one should buy those games and get infected, because even though it doesn't come directly from Activision and the servers, I think there should be a responsibility from the devs or publisher to ensure that the games are safe. And even though Steam has a policy about malware, um, it doesn't seem like it cares in the case of Call of Duty, either because it sells well or simply because it's not coming from the game itself. It's coming from other players utilizing the game's exploits. Valve, their games themselves, have actually had RC exploits in the past. Uh, we've seen it with Counter-Strike 2 that had some issues, and Left 4 Dead constantly has patches about RCE. They're actually uh, putting bounties, and if you discover an exploit and send it to them, they send you money. Which, honestly, is what Activision should do. If they put bounties, like every other fucking dev, on things for people to figure out the exploits and how to fix them, then pay them, then everyone would be happy. But no, what do they do? Well, Activision just decides to cease and desist every fucking client that they see and not pay anyone for doing their job. So if they're not going to do their job and they're not going to pay anyone to do it, then nobody's going to do it. Simple as that. And if you're going to shut down anyone who does it for free, well, then what's the fucking point? Honestly, at this point, these games are just malware sitting on the Steam store page and they should just be removed. And that's my opinion. Legally, that's not the case. I don't want to see these games go get off the store, don't get me wrong, I love these games. But at some point, you have to think about the security of the consumer. We should stop selling it to people, you know? That's... anyway, that's my opinion. Now, ever since Activision has been bought by Microsoft, people are thinking that maybe, just maybe, there's hope and that Microsoft will actually try to fix those issues so that the games can be on Game Pass. Well, no, while that is kind of true, we have seen matchmaking getting improved on the Xbox versions of the games. Um, it's not like they really patched anything other than the matchmaking, and I don't think they will. Although, Microsoft does have uh, a big marketing thing that they say that game preservation is very important to them. Uh, we can see it with the backwards compatibility that they have for most of these games, uh, the popular ones. And now that they own Activision, I don't think that it's very smart for Microsoft to be selling games that can install malware on your Microsoft Windows machine. I'm just putting it this way. It's kind of weird when you think about it. And um, yeah, so if I was Microsoft, I would either remove the games or patch them. Now, like I said, patching them is a whole lot of work. Are they gonna do it? Well, I don't know. They could also just throw the games on Game Pass and not tell anybody and just say, fuck it, get hacked. I don't think they would, though, because, you know, that would be a bad press, obviously, for obvious reasons. So. I mean, if they really do plan on putting these games on Game Pass, on PC Game Pass, well, they're going to have to do some work. So, are they going to do that? Mm, I don't know. I mean, Activision's a whole motto was play the newest game, play the newest game, play the newest game. It doesn't seem like they want people to play the older games. Uh, side of me can't help but have a little bit of hope that Microsoft cares about the old games. Uh, kind of like they do with the old Halo games and understand how preserving those games is important and hopefully they will fix it and put it on Game Pass and everybody will be happy and that whole video will just be a sad corner of our lives that we can put to rest. The chances of that happening are pretty low in my opinion because Microsoft is very busy with other projects and I don't think that their priority is to save Call of Duty Ghost from the 50 people who play it uh, that might get hacked. Sadly, I don't see that happening anytime soon, but hopefully it will one day. Who knows, maybe 10 years away from now, we might even get just uh, a Call of Duty Master Chief collection with every Call of Duty somewhat remastered or ported over 
with fixes that actually patch everything. And then the old games are removed from the stores because, well, fuck them, they're just malware and now we have the newest versions you can buy. That's probably the route they would take if I had to guess. Instead of trying to patch the old, just make the new. And of course, they could even add new skins and microtransactions in each of them, so that's a win-win. So, anyways, uh, enough rambling for now. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope that it was informative for you in some way. Please let me know and share it with your friends, make sure that if you see someone on your Steam list that launches any of the games that are very dangerous that I mentioned in this video, make sure to tell them, hey, uh, don't play that, you idiot, you will get hacked. <laughs> and if they don't believe you, well, you know, you can always send them this video. <laughs> Little plug there. Anyways. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.